Well, might as well make another rant video since whenever I do, I get more popularity. What is so difficult for you people that try to defend your abuse of adblock when it comes to understanding that it's not a big fucking deal to watch an ad real quick or to click the skip button on an ad? You don't even have to watch the whole thing. They give you a skip button for a reason. Just click the skip button. It's like you watched it, except you didn't have to watch it. All the way, at least. What's so difficult about people watching ads on Twitch streams? Usually when the ad is going up, they aren't doing anything anyway. That's when they take a short break and they show an ad. Some people only show ads at the beginning of the stream and then when they end the stream. Why can't you watch those ads? Why would you take money away from those people for literally no reason? Why do you feel like you're entitled to do the things that you're doing? Why do you feel that you're entitled to determine whether a career is real or not? Why do you feel that you're entitled to determine whether or not what somebody considers a job is a job or not? What position do you hold to have these opinions? What information do you have to justify your thoughts? What reasoning do you have to justify what you think versus what I've presented? I have two long posts that detail everything about what I feel and what I believe in this thing I'm talking about. You have nothing. You've provided me with nothing. You've provided me with schoolyard insults, observations of my body shape and size, and nothing else. Just insults. That's all you've given me. I have no information from you people. Just your opinions on what's going on, and there's no information behind it. You're instead taking the big picture and focusing on me when I'm talking about the big picture. It's for all content creators, not just me, but you want to make it about me because that makes it easier for you to try to sound like you're right, even though even if you just make it about me, you're still wrong. Where you're coming from is still wrong. Where you're coming from is still the entitled position, not mine. Sorry. It's not how it works. A customer doesn't get to walk into a store and determine which cashier is a cashier and which cashier isn't. They're all cashiers. A customer doesn't get to come into a store and determine what the stock is for the day. That's up to the people that do the ordering. Be they the managers, the owners, or anyone else that they're paying to keep track of the inventory. It's not the customer's place to do that. You're not entitled, as a customer, to control that much of what a store does. In your control are what you consume and what you don't consume. What you want to consume as well. Sometimes, a store will have everything that you want to consume, and you will want to consume it, and then you will consume it. Everybody wins. Sometimes, you go to a store, and it doesn't have what you consume. Usually stores, or anything that offers product, be they content creators, or retail stores, or insurance firms, etc., any kind of product, they'll have ways for you to request that product that you want, or they'll have a way for you to get a replacement that may not be the same product, but may be equal in other ways. Sometimes, when you go into a store, you don't feel like everyone is working at the same level as a customer. Well, you are given opportunities to leave reviews, and they give you surveys to rate your performance. Whether or not it really affects anything about what's going on depends on the company, as it's the company's decision within itself on what it does, not yours. You can protest and boycott the companies, but they will continue to do what they do and how they do it because it's their thing, not yours. One thing that a lot of people don't understand about copyrights and content in general is the song that's recorded by a band is the record label song. The record label owns this song. It's theirs. The record label has determined that they want to share this song with you, the consumers. You get to buy the right to play the song for yourself. A personal license, if you will by buying the CDs, or the downloads nowadays, 
for your computer. What you don't buy is a mechanical license or any other kind of license to play this recording for other people, or at least more than 20 people, according to the law. This is because you, the consumers, didn't record the song. You, the consumers, do not own the song. You own a copy of the recording, depending on how you obtained it. If it's on a cassette, it'll be a closer copy than a CD, and it'll be both of those will be better copies than a download, especially through iTunes. iTunes has the worst uh, coding compressions that it will do to music. It just absolutely kills the quality. That's beyond the point. It's not yours. You don't own the rights to that. You just own the recordings that are on that disc, that are on that cassette, that are within your download. Sometimes you can download a whole album at once. You own the right to play them for you or 20 other people in a small part. A personal thing. You don't have the right to publicize it. That's how the copyright works. You can play music. You can play music for yourself. You can play music for a small group of friends. I will repeat once more. You can't post it publicly anywhere. And you especially can't make money from doing such a thing. It's the record label who makes money from doing that. And because they make money from doing that, they can afford to buy better studios, better producers, and hire better artists to create better music for you to play and talk about and share with your friends. You, the ungrateful masses of today, have decided that everyone should own everything. Now there's a problem with this idea, especially when it comes to creative content. There was a business surrounding music. It was called the music industry. The music industry existed where people could go in and get a record deal and produce an album and sell CDs. If they got a really good record label and they sold their CDs really well, they wouldn't make a lot of money, needless to say. They would make half to a fourth of what the total sales were because the record label is responsible for a majority of it anyway. They're the ones that distributed it. They're the ones that paid for the recording time. They're the ones who paid for your instruments. They're the ones who paid for your paid sponsorships. They're the ones who rented your gear. It wasn't out of your pocket, it was out of theirs. And so, they take a big cut of what you did. However, the second part of your record deal allowed you to have concerts concerts would be your money that's money that you're making you're selling the tickets you sell some merchandise on the side sometimes they'll record a CD of the live performance and that's how the record company can make money off of your live performances it will then sell those CDs and get a bigger cut of that but you can make but tons of money through touring then artists kind of threw that all out the window they wanted more creative control they didn't want the record labels controlling what they could put on their CDs. They didn't want the record labels telling them what to do with the product that the record labels need to sell. So they changed the record deal. <clears throat> now, they have what's called a 360 deal. This is because the record label doesn't give a shit what you want to do. And no matter what happens out of you, it's going to pull a profit. Whether you want to release an album, Go on tour, sell some merchandise, or sell pictures of yourself to a magazine. The record label, according to this document, is going to take a percentage of everything, and it's going to be a big percentage. Now, more than ever, artists, especially new artists and small artists, of all kinds, be they musical or YouTube skit makers, YouTube animators, YouTube artists, people that just put up their speed paintings and then they distribute their art that you people steal and take their credits off of 
and don't source the material and just spread it around and all of that free advertising is worthless because you don't source the material so nobody knows who made it and they don't bother to search. Fortunately, Google Chrome gives you the ability to search for images, but if you have four million people that have all spread this thing with no source, it'll be pretty difficult to find the original. There are some pictures that have been spread around a lot and you find the source immediately. And these pictures are very nice and these artists are very lucky to have such a situation. Most of the time, the source is buried underneath all of the filth. And it's just unbelievable how shameless the other side is in this argument. How blissfully unaware they are of themselves. How blissfully unaware they are of their privileged positions. Of their opinions that are wrought from such a privileged position. If they didn't have the kind of privileges that they have as consumers of the various things that people are making, be they art on the internet or some YouTube content, they wouldn't think the way that they do. It's provided to you for free. Making videos for fun is all fine and good, but when you don't make money from it at all, you have to stop eventually. If everyone on YouTube wasn't making any money at all, channels would leave over time because they wouldn't be able to continue making YouTube content and they would either be replaced by new ones or people would, as a whole, just look at the whole idea of, well, I can put up these videos on YouTube and not make a cent off of them and it's just basically a storage site for videos. It's because of the introduction of ads that it just inspires people to want to make more and better content to try to cash in on it because they don't want to do anything else for their job. Some people want to do YouTube forever. Unfortunately for you, uh, people on the other side of this argument, I want to work in studios forever. It'll pay a lot better than any of you could ever pay me by watching an ad. However, I'm trying to justify having a channel by saying, well, it makes money. You know, I can't, I can't not say it doesn't make money, you know, and it doesn't make money right now. So what happens when I finally get a job? I have to leave all of you behind. I don't want to do that to my fans because I care about them. But if the, if the channel isn't making money, then making content for it is losing money. And I don't want to lose money to the point where even having that studio job won't matter anymore. It's not okay. It's not something that's complicated. You don't need a lot of business sense and sense of how economies work and how spending versus saving works. If I wanted to manage money better, I wouldn't do any content on YouTube whatsoever because none of it makes any money. But then what about the fan? What about the fans that I've accumulated? The people that do like to watch content that I make? What about them? How could I forget about them? How could I just leave them behind? There are people that like what I do and like to watch what I do. And I don't want to take that away from them. That isn't right of me to do in spite of the fact that I'm not getting enough back from them to facilitate making more. And it's difficult on my end of the spectrum. Because when you're coming at it from my angle, it's really easy for one of you to simply say that I don't care and that I only care about money because you don't see it from the way that a content creator would, from someone who has been working in the business would work. I understand a lot of things about voice acting as a business that you don't because I've worked in it as a business. I understand a lot of things about post-production as a business that you don't because I've worked in the post-production side of the business. I understand a lot about studio work that you don't because I've worked there and you haven't. You've only heard about working there. You've only seen videos about it. You've only heard the opinions of people who have worked in it for either many years or a few days. You don't know what it's like to do it. You don't know what it's like to be in it. It's just as stressful as any other job. It 
difference is, it's a lot more fun to talk about at the end of the day. The hours are ridiculous on a studio job, I might add. The pay is really nice for the most part. And you get better accolades in the long run. More people will probably remember you than if you were to be someone who's in a desk crunching numbers for the rest of your life. And some people are content with crunching numbers for the rest of their life. I want to give something back to the world, be it through something I've made or something that I've helped make. And it's not easy to do that because society is very resistant to the idea that somebody would want to give back to society and then get money from it. But at the same time, they want to watch things and they want to enjoy things and they want to be entertained and they want it to be high quality and they want to hold it to standards. Like, if you want people to just make videos and shut up, then don't complain about what I'm doing. I'm turning what I believe into more content. You have no right to be complaining in the first place. Your argument as a whole is void as soon as you say, just make the videos. It doesn't matter. Why are you so upset over $7? Why are you upset about the whole thing then? Why do you feel the need to say anything about it? Because there's something wrong. And saying you should be silent is classic of someone who's in a privileged position talking down to someone who isn't. That's why you are the privileged one. I'm not asking you to give me money. I've never asked for donations and I never will. I'm asking you to watch an ad because you can do that for free. The ads can be skipped and it supports me monetarily. So at the same time as you're supporting me by watching the videos and giving them more popularity and views and making them easier for people to find when they search for things, you're also giving me a little bit of money. Just a little bit. But it's not even you. YouTube is giving me that money. This has nothing to do with you beyond you just watching the ads. That's YouTube's money that it gives me, not yours. You haven't paid a thing to do what I'm asking you to do. You don't have to pay any money to YouTube to watch ads. You don't have to pay any money to me to watch ads. You don't have to pay any money to me to not watch ads. Everything on both sides of the spectrum is free. So why is it such a big deal to just watch an ad? No one has explained that to me at all. All they've done is throw insults at me and make it about me. It's not about the issue that I'm presenting to them. And until you can address the issue, I'm going to remain vigilant and I'm going to remain in the right because you're wrong. You'll have nothing to prove you right. You have plenty to prove that you're an asshole. You have plenty to prove that you're defensive. You have plenty to prove that you're aggravated at what's going on. But if you don't want to take responsibility, that's fine. Just admit that. Then we all know for sure and can confirm beyond the shadow of a doubt that you're cowards. You don't have to try to hide anymore. You don't have to go on anonymous anymore and send in your hatred. You can assume identities. You can be a person and do it. Because now everybody knows what's going on. They know that you're a coward trying to run from a responsibility to do one little thing. Like, I don't know if it's because you're lazy and you're too lazy to watch an ad and that's too much effort for you because you're too lazy. Or if it's just that you're selfish and you feel like your time is so valuable, yet you'll still watch a video. Like, you're, you're watching a YouTube video. What is... Where is the logic behind your thought? Let me in, man. I want to know. Let me in.